Hello there. While we don't know the exact ins and outs of everything to do with the expansion, we're all looking to go in as best prepared as possible. And with early access just a month away, here is a list of 11 things you need to do before Stormblood. Number 11. Max your Grand Company rank as well as capping on Company Seals. Getting to max rank with your Grand Company should be a high priority for all of us, as no doubt, when 4.0 finally does get released, we'll be treated to a whole host of new equipment, glamours, crafting mats, and maybe even minions. Not only that, but you'll probably want to stock up on a boatload of ventures while you're at it. There's bound to be an awesome new minion, just like we had with Fat Cat and Gestal, so be prepared for that by having a stack of ventures ready for release. The current cap on company seals is 80,000, and to unlock this there are a multitude of quests that need to be completed, as well as partaking in squadrons to get you the max rank of first lieutenant. This really is something that you should have been doing as part of your time in Eorzea anyway, but a lot of people still haven't even touched their squadrons. It takes a little simple math to work out what stats your squadron needs in order to level up, but it's nothing too strenuous. It's not the most exciting thing ever, but you should definitely be aiming on getting all 8 members of your squadron to level 50, before the release of Stormblood. Squadrons will no doubt be added to in the expansion, so you don't want to be left behind when they finally do release an update for this. In addition to this, each week you can send off your squadron on a priority mission where they come back with all kinds of loot for you, from MGP, to scripts, to materia. On top of all this, and the most important in my point of view, are the personal 15% and 20% EXP buffs for battle classes, gatherers and crafters. No doubt a lot of free companies will already have EXP buffs running 24-7, especially when Stormblood does drop. But having your own experience buffs that you get to decide when to use can be invaluable in getting that edge on everyone else, especially if you're deciding to main one of the two new classes, or you want to be server first in getting your crafters and gatherers to 70. Which leads us to... Number 10. Completing 16 leaves of your choice and not turning them in until after maintenance. This is something I did for the launch of Heaven's Ward 2. At any one time you're allowed to have 16 open leaves, so to me this is a no-brainer. Three days before maintenance, or even earlier if possible, you should start and finish 16 leaves, but only turn them in once Stormblood has officially started. This may not seem like much, but it will instantly give whatever classes you are planning to level a boost towards level 61. For me, I'm a crafter, and there are 8 crafting classes, which means they can have 2 leaves each. And at a time where there's a whole bunch of people on every server trying to be the first crafter to get to level 70, this may well be the thing that just gives you the edge. Number 9. Setting all retainers off on an 18 hour field exploration venture just before maintenance. This may seem very obvious to some, but it's something that I make sure to do every time there's maintenance now. The reason for this is that when I did it many moons ago while maintenance was happening, I logged in after the update to find my retainer miraculously had brought me a fat cat. A server first fat cat might I add, which I then sold within an hour for 12 million gil. Sure, by today's standards that isn't much, but back then that was crazy money. And it had set me up with a nice chunk of change to get myself some best in slot crafting gear, which is now why I make sure to do it without fail. Number 8, Palace of the Dead. I think we can all agree that Palace of the Dead is fairly awful. The experience is delightful, the same repetitive rooms and mechanics over and over again is not. And it's about to get a whole lot worse. With two new classes coming with Stormblood, and DPS classes at that, queue times for standard dungeons are going to be awful. And because of that, a lot of people will be spamming out Palace of the Dead to level their classes. Imagine running Palace of the Dead with four new Samurais or Red Mages that don't know their rotations. It's going to be awful. But it is something you can do to help with this. Getting your armour and weapon to plus 99 each will help in a massive way, as even if you're awful at these new classes, you'll still be out DPSing those that have mastered their class that only have, say, a plus 30 or god help us even lower. Besides, while you're getting your armour and weapon stats to 99, you can also love your classes that aren't 60 yet, in an environment where you can quickly learn the basics of that class. Number 7. Hoard that MGP. While a lot of you will be tempted to blow all that hard-earned MGP on buying the Fenrir mount, while this is not a bad choice at all, I highly recommend you hold on to all that MGP just a little bit longer, as it would not be surprising at all that 4.0 would bring a new mount, or at the very least some sexy new weapon and gear glamour from the gold saucer. Worst comes to worst, you hold on to it for now, and you can just go back and get the flying sparkle dog after the expansion drops. Number 6 is Hoard That Gill. 
This one kind of goes without saying, but the more gear we have going into Stormblood, the better. If you're not a crafter, you may well end up having to buy a certain piece of gear when you hit 70 in order to do some of the new content. Having a stack of disposable gear ready for you to spend will certainly help with that. And if you are a crafter, get crafting now and save up all those profits so that you can get the new and most likely overpriced crafting mats available at the launch of Stormblood. For those that don't craft or gather, don't forget to keep up with your wondrous tales books and treasure maps, as some of the items from Dole still fetch a decent price on most server market boards. Number 5. Gear up your classes. Another fairly obvious one, so we won't spend long on this, but the better your gear is before maintenance, the easier time you'll have going into Stormblood. Hitting I-270 is easier than ever with the scripture cat recently being doubled to 900 weekly, and the weekly restrictions being taken off Alexander Savage. Anyone can hit 260 plus easily just by doing some of the daily roulettes and even Alexander Normal, so have at it. Number 4. Finishing the Anima Quest Something that is entirely optional, and something that will probably make you want to uninstall the game and end yourself, but also something that's so so shiny. By doing the roulettes to get your gear at I-270, you'll have a ton of excess lore. Use this to buy A4 oil, Umbrite, and any of the other turns you need for the many stages of the animal weapon. Focusing on finishing this will probably drive you mad, but if you think of it as a subquest, it really isn't as horrible as it seems, especially with all the recent nerfs to its many stages. Number 3. Hold on to your crafting mats and materia. You'll be horribly tempted to sell these things as soon as you get them, but here's why you shouldn't. If you're a crafter, you'll be using a lot of these mats going forward into Stormblood, and with the extra inventory slots being added, there's just no need to sell them now. Even if you're not a crafter, these prices will no doubt spike after maintenance, so you're better off holding on to them until then, making crafters like myself pay over the odds for them. On top of this, hold on to any material you have, keep hold of pot shirts from Palace of the Dead, and keep hold of Mahachimata. Selling them now is somewhat pointless, as a week after 4.0, all current gear will be redundant and people will be buying materia for all the new level 70 gear, especially crafting materia. Number 2. Getting all augmented casting and striking ironworks gear. Something almost essential if you want to switch your main to either samurai or red mage, getting all the casting and ironworks gear will get you to around the I-130 mark as soon as you unlock the new classes. The standard I-120 ironworks gear can be gotten from Oriana and Mordona, and alone will do you quite well until about level 55. However, upgrading these pieces with carbon twine for the body, carbon coat for accessories, and encrypted tombstones for the weapons will definitely help you out of your new classes. These upgrades can be bought from Ariana, or be farmed in the final coil of Bahamut, each of which can be downed in under 10 minutes each unsynced. And number one, ignore all this and just have fun. None of this is essential, it's just things that could help you get ahead of everyone else if you have the time, which, let's be honest, a lot of us don't have. If you do, Fantastic, go get him, kid. Or, if you think our advice is laughable, then that's fine too. The most important thing is, though, that either way, you're having fun. And don't go crazy worrying about skipping sore or anything like that, because a week into Stormblood, you'll probably be able to go in blind with the four-man party and wreck him. And with that being said, have fun in the final days of Heavensward, enjoy the end of the story, and we'll see you all in Stormblood.